Hey everybody, so today we're going to talk about ecosystem ecologies. We're starting our new unit, and our new unit is about ecology. So we're going to talk about things like how do different organisms interact with each other, how do they interact with their environment, and what happens when that balance is kind of interrupted by human activities or other things like that. So we're going to talk about ecosystem ecology first, and I wanted to start out with talking about uh, a case study. So if you didn't know this, Haiti is a country in the Caribbean. They were devastated by an earthquake a couple of years ago, and they are also having a really big issue with deforestation. Deforestation is where you cut down the trees, and most of the time you cut down almost all of them. So the reason that they've cut down most of the trees is because most Haitians use charcoal to cook their food. And the way that you make charcoal is you actually use firewood. So you put firewood into like a one barrel, and then you put that barrel inside of another barrel, and then you can make charcoal that way. It's actually a really cool process. So Haitians cut down large areas of land to get firewood, to get charcoal. And this is a really common phenomenon. If you are in a less developed country and you, you know, you're not really worried about, you know, next hundred years, you're really wondering, you know, how am I going to cook my food for tomorrow or how am I going to find food for tomorrow? So in 1923, about 60% of the country was forested. And then in 2006, less than 2% of the country was forested. Um, and now in about 2015, 2016, it's gone down to, I think, less than 1%. Um, so some environmental impacts or environmental effects of deforestation, you're going to have a ton of soil erosion. Remember we talked about that the soil is uh, being held in place by those plants' roots. Um, you're also going to have some water quality issues because if you have that sediment, that soil that's going to go into your rivers, then it's going to increase the turbidity. So hopefully you remember turbidity is how cloudy the water is. And then if fish can't see their prey or they can't detect predators, they're going to move away as well. So it's really kind of a, a cyclical effect or kind of like a snowball effect. So this is where Haiti is. It's on the same island as the Dominican Republic. This whole island is known as Hispaniola. Here's Cuba, here's the Bahamas, and then here's Turks and Caicos. Uh, so this is the, the border between the Dominican Republic here and then Haiti over here. And even nowadays they have, the Dominican Republic has a, a police force that guards the border because people from Haiti will slip across the border and cut down some of their trees. So they're really trying to cut down on that. So let's talk about what ecology is. And ecology is going to be the study of the interaction between living things, their surroundings, their physical environment, and then other animals, other plants, uh, bacteria, and all that kind of stuff. So if you took AP Biology, this is going to be a really big review. And hopefully if you took um, Honors Biology, it'll all come back to you once I start talking more about ecology. So ecology is a really big uh, part of the AP exam. They've restructured the exam in the, past, in the recent years to in increase the amount of ecology that's on there. So this over here, and I'm kind of covering up um, a lot of the, the chart here, this is just the organization of, of all life. And so what is an organism? An organism is going to be any living thing, basically. And there are two different cell types. There are eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells are going to be your bacteria, your protist, um, some single-celled organisms. And the main difference between the two is that... Uh, the eukaryotic cells, they have a membrane-bound nucleus. The prokaryotic cell does not have a membrane-bound nucleus. They both have membranes that, you know, surround them, that make up the border of the cell, but uh, the prokaryotic cells do not have a membrane-bound nucleus, so their DNA is just kind of floating around in the cell. Um, prokaryotic cells are going to be bacteria, microorganisms, and then eukaryotic cells are plants, fungi, which is the plural of fungus, and then animals. So plants and fungi, so both of these, plants and fungi, both have a cell wall. And the cell wall in plants is going to be made out of cellulose, but then in fungus it can be made out of different things. Sometimes it's made out of chitin, sometimes it's made out of other things. Animals do not have a, a cell wall they just have a, a membrane around that, you know, kind of separates them from the outside world. All right, so let's talk about the organization of life. So and one organism is one living thing, one individual thing. 
In a single species of organisms, those are going to be like a group of animals or plants or fungus that are so similar that they can breed together and they can produce healthy fertile offspring. So a really big thing here is healthy fertile offspring. You can have certain species uh, breed together, um, like a donkey and a, what's the other one, a zebra and a donkey, but then their, their offspring are actually sterile, meaning that they can't have kids. So again, this fertile here is kind of a big thing. Um, a population includes all the members of that one species that live in a, a given area at the same time. And then this biological community is going to be, you take a ton of populations and you put them all together and they're all interacting within one general area. All right, so we've got the next stage of organization. We've got an ecosystem. So once we get to an ecosystem, and we're talking about the different levels of organization here, the ecosystem is going to be the biological community, so all of those things that are interacting, those living things. And then it's going to include the physical environment as well. It's going to include non-living things like soil, precipitation, uh, pH, humidity, all those different things. And I've kind of got a picture here to show you. So this is one individual organism. And this is a population, so we put together a ton of the same species. Then we put them all together with other living things. So this is like a, a yak or something. Then we add a rhino and then some other things, and that's a biological community. If we include the non-living things like water, um, maybe some uh, geological features such as whatever this is, it looks like a termite mound, um, soil, all those different things, that's going to be an ecosystem. And then finally, we've got the biosphere, and that's going to put together tons of different ecosystems. And the biosphere is basically the whole world. All right, so ecosystems can be hard to define because you have to think about what you're talking about. Are you talking about, you know, like a biome? Are you talking about one giant region um, like the tundra or like the boreal forest or the taiga? Um, where one ecosystem starts and the other ends is, is really hard to define, and they may ask you a question about this on the, the AP exam, because you could have one ecosystem that is as big as the Yellowstone National Park, but then on the other hand, in a decaying tree that, that fell over, you could have all kinds of organisms in there as well. You could have, you know, fungus, you could have bacteria, you could have um, insects, tons of different stuff. So uh, let's talk about the Earth's life-supporting systems. So if we're talking about the biosphere, which we just kind of, you know, talked about, the portion of Earth in which the living organisms exist and interact with one another, so all the biological things. We've got the atmosphere, which is this, uh, the, this should not say thing, this should say thin in envelope of air that surrounds the planet. And the atmosphere is going to be broken down into different layers, like the troposphere and the stratosphere, the mesosphere, the thermosphere, and then the exosphere. Um, the troposphere is where we live. Uh, it's where weather occurs. Um, and then the stratosphere is going to be where the uh, ozone layer is. Um, the hydrosphere is going to be all the water. And then the lithosphere we talked about last unit. We talked about the Earth's crust, the upper mantle, you know, that asthenosphere all those different things. So who lives where? So if we're talking about who lives in a certain place, we're talking about an animal or a plant's habitat. And habitats usually are a, you know, a collection of different factors. So for example, uh, the, mo the two most important are going to be temperature and precipitation. So temperature, how hot or cold is it? And then precipitation is going to be the amount of uh, rain, snow, really anything, any form of water that is falling from the sky. And just like you or, you know, humans, animals and plants have things that they like. And some plants like really dry conditions where other plants can't live there. So a cactus would be an example. Cacti or cacti really love dry conditions or they're really adapted to those uh, dry conditions. So they'll probably stay there. So, uh, an ecosystem can be uh, defined by or distinguished by its living and non-living things. And I'm just trying to give you these two words because you will see these two words all the time. So if you see the word abiotic, the, the uh, letter A at the front of anything usually means not or no. 
um, biota or biotic is going to be living. So if you remember this, it'll be abiotic. Those are going to be your non-living factors, so things that aren't alive, like climate, rainfall, uh, sunlight, pH, nutrient levels, all those different things. If we're talking about the biotic components of an ecosystem, we're talking about uh, trees, plants, fungus, decomposers, all those different things. So let's talk about this thing called critical tolerance. So each population in an ecosystem has this range of a certain bi abiotic factor that they like to be in. So for example, let's say that this environmental variable here, let's say that it is temperature. So if the temperature is really, really high, then there's not going to be a lot of them. There are a lot of organisms there. If the temperature is really, really low, there's also not going to be a lot of organisms there. So this is kind of like a, a normal distribution curve where the peak here would be like the, the most or the mean value for something. So like I said, this here would be the optimum where everyone wants to be, right? And this law of tolerance is going to state the presence of a species in an ecosystem is determined by whether or not the levels of one or more chemical factors fall within this range of tolerance. So it's kind of like um, like us. I personally don't like to be uh, really, really cold. Um, so if this is temperature down here, this environmental variable is temperature. I don't want to be where it's really, really cold down here. I would be more comfortable where it's you know somewhere around in here. But then I also don't like it to be really, really hot either. So I'm going to try to stay within this general range here. But a lot of other people don't like for it to be, you know, really cold or really hot. So they're going to try to live within this optimum level as well. But what happens is, is everyone starts to try to live in this optimum, you know, range or this optimum area. And then competition becomes too much. There's competition for space, competition for food, competition for water. And eventually, some people are just going to have to accept the fact that they're going to have to move to somewhere that's slightly cooler or slightly warmer and just kind of deal with it. So this is showing you uh, an environmental gradient. So this can be really anything. This can be uh, temperature. It can be pH. It can be precipitation. And this is what they would call the optimum range. So there would be tons of, of species of butterflies here or individual butterflies here. And remember, all of these butterflies would love to live in this optimal range, but they can't because there's just too much competition. There's too much competition for food, for water, for mates, um, and for just space where you can, you know, have a home or have a habitat. Um, so some of them will choose or will be pushed out to this thing called the zone of physiological stress. And it's on both sides of the, you know, the, the main optimal range here. Um, the species will be infrequent here because some of them have been pushed out here and they have to live out here just because, you know, they can't, you know, compete and, and keep up with the species that are in here. So that's the zone of physiological stress. The organisms are going to be stressed out, but they'll still live there. They won't like it, but they'll live there. And then we've got the zone of intolerance here, which is where, you know, they just can't hack it. They can't live out here. And then those species will be absent. So that's on both sides. And that is it for this presentation. And I kept it underneath 15 minutes for you this time. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please give me a comment or you can uh, send me an email. Hope you have a great day.